Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Paduska, star maker for entrepreneurs who want to unlock their potential, command any stage, and make blockbuster profits. Welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a brand that makes you happy and profitable. Here we go. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Padaska, founder of the Brand Star Academy, where I teach entrepreneurs how to become powerful, profitable speakers. Welcome to this episode of Thrive, How to Embody Confidence with my guest, Nancy Martin. Nancy Martin is an abuse prevention expert and an empowerment coach for women and young girls. She teaches women and young girls how to embody confidence to get to their core confidence so they can avoid becoming victims of abuse. Nancy also is an international best-selling author of the book, Dance Your Way to an Empowered Self. She uses her unique dance background combined with coaching skills to help women understand how to use their bodies and on this episode we talk about that what does it mean to embody confidence what is core confidence Nancy shows us a really cool exercise I do it with her that shows us how when we use our body the right way we look strong and powerful and like somebody that you don't want to mess with and in other ways when we use our body and make ourselves small we put a big fat target on our back and that is not what you want Nancy also shares why she is an abuse prevention expert and her personal story of transformation of being a victim and now a survivor and now a leader and an advocate and a coach for women so that they can keep themselves safe, have their voice and create the life that they really choose, not just what society tells them they can do based on limited thinking. It was a fascinating interview. You are going to love Nancy. She is fun and sensual and just wonderful. So I hope you enjoy this episode of Thrive. On another note, no pun intended, if you'd like to learn how to become a powerful, profitable speaker online or on stage so that you can make more money from your message so that people can become brand evangelists so that you feel comfortable, confident, and know how to sell without feeling salesy. I'd love to talk to you. You can check out my programs at heatherpaduska.com under the consulting tab where I help entrepreneurs become powerful, profitable speakers and learn how to create profitable, unique brands so they become known in their industry as leaders. Okay, on to the show. I hope you enjoy this. This episode of Thrive. Hi everyone, I'm Heather Paduska, star maker to entrepreneurs who want to find their authentic voice and command any stage. Welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a more abundant life and business. You're in for high value content coming to you from industry leaders who are growing their business, making an impact, and rocking their brands. And I am thrilled to have my special guest here today, Nancy Martin. Nancy Martin is the author of Dance Your Way to an Empowered Self, Four Elements to Achieve Shining Confidence. Nancy learned that fighting physical, mental, and sexual abuse towards women can be done with lightness and care, not resentment and anger. She's developed her own voice and confidence, and her mission now is to take her personal learning and spread it to as many girls and women as possible. Nancy has been featured on television and is an avid speaker and now graces our stage. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Wow. So tell us a little bit about your book about dancing your way to more confidence. I'm a singer, so I, you know, I'm all about using the arts, but you know, how does dancing really play into it? Right, so I learned that when I was very young that in the dance studio and on the dance floor, for me, was the one place where I felt totally in control. Mm. The rest of my life, I didn't feel confident, I didn't feel in control, I didn't feel like I had any choices. Yeah. But there, mm -hmm. by changing my music, by changing my choreography, I could transform into whoever I wanted to be. Mm. It was so empowering and it, that's why I just loved being there so much. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to now going through coach training to be a life coach, mm -hmm. I've gone through the Newfield School, uh, the Newfield Network, and they teach coach training the ontological way. What does which, that mean? So um, it means that it, it encompasses the whole being. Huh. And so for them, they talk about the three parts. And one 
is your words, your communication. So that means defining words in the way that you use them to others or to yourself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes how redefining words can change your outcomes. Mm -hmm. The second is moods and emotions. Mm -hmm. So how the, you, the feelings that you're feeling can alter your choice of words mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And then there's the body. And so we all know that when we get stressed, people say, well, just take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. And that's just one sign of how our bodies can drastically change our moods mm -hmm. and therefore the way that we communicate, the way that we make decisions, the way we talk to ourselves. And so we combine all three of those things mm -hmm. to make the whole being. Wow. It sounds like functional medicine for the soul. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. And so when I went through this training and we did a lot of somatics, which is working with the body and how the body does these things, mm -hmm the light bulb went off that that's my dance training combined with this was my calling. I love that. Have you, you know, there was a coach a long time ago, I think it was Andrea Lee, and she talked about um, your Reese's moment. Mm. You know, remember that old commercial in the 70s yes. where the guy's walking with the peanut butter and the girl's walking with the chocolate <laughs> yeah, and they bump right. and they yes, get, yes. this is your Reese's moment. Right, right. And I, you know, I did the same thing. I was a singer, an opera singer for a long time and then I transitioned into entrepreneurship and I was mm -hmm. like, you know, at the beginning, people said, you know, you don't need that. And you just toss that out. And I was like, but I spent a lot of money and time and energy doing yes. that. It must be useful. Right. And now combining it with speaker training and branding because of the performance. And as a performer, I totally get what you're saying. You have to embody. That's exactly. where that word comes from. That's embody right. Embody the confidence. Yes. Yes. So who are your clients? Who do you work with to help them get that, that release? Right, so one aspect of my clientele is that I work with dance studios. Okay. And so I can go in, because back when I was teaching and managing dance studios, I was able to take one of, um, help take one of the dance studios that I was working for from one to five locations in four years. Mm -hmm. And so I know the business end of that. Yeah. I was very fortunate to have the owner that really had us in on all of it and help her make decisions on nice. all of those things. So I learned a whole ton about how to make a dance studio successful. And not the dance mom version, right? Right, exactly, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We won't go there. <laughs> so now what I do is I go in as a full consultant, anything from the business end to helping to pull more out of the students mm. if they're struggling with getting the right type of choreography or anything with the students, or even with if they're having uh, you know, parent problems, I can go in and help change that culture too. Yeah, and you, from your book and from the, I, I heard you speak recently, you have your own story about that and how you really have transitioned in your life to become a confident woman. And we, I said in the intro about addressing those more serious issues with lightness and care. So can yes. you speak a little bit more to that? Sure. Um, so just technically what I do now, is because I speak the language of the dancer, mm -hmm. that's why I chose to go through dance studios first with mm -hmm. this. Um, because we do feel that confidence on the stage but don't know how to pull it into our everyday lives. Mm. That's what I do with the girls, oh, wow. right? So I go in um, showing them how they can have better stage presence mm -hmm. and tap into their emotions and become the it girl on stage, mm -hmm. but also through the training, show them how they can pull it out into their real life also so they don't leave it on the stage they bring it into their real lives also mm. so for myself yes i unfortunately have had a history from being a very small child having sexual abuse from a family member at a very small child and then from there it just spiraled mm -hmm. you know between physical emotional and sexual abuse from various relationships mm -hmm. growing up um, and with all of this working on myself. I, I feel like, although I had this really low confidence and felt like I wasn't worthy, mm -hmm. occasionally, every once in a while, there was this little voice that said, no, there's more. Mm -hmm. I just got a goosebumps. No, there's more. Yeah. And every once in a while, I would listen to it. And there would be a lesson to be learned, and then I would take that step up. Yeah. And then life would go on this level, and then I would try, and I would, 
you know, wherever I was at this level, and then every once in a while, usually in the silence, usually for me around na nature and especially waterfalls. I learned a lot from waterfalls. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that little bug will teach me a lesson, mm -hmm. and then I'll move a step up. Mm -hmm. And so I've been inching my way up. And the strongest lesson that I've learned through all of this is that all of the changes are within myself. Mm. So resentment towards those that hurt me, resentment towards the culture that fostered that idea that that's acceptable, mm -hmm. doesn't help me lead the rest of my life where I want to, mm -hmm. in joy and lightness and happiness and dancing and celebrating. Right. So if I'm changing myself in a mood of resentment, that's the mood that's going to follow me through the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. But if I change myself through empowering myself and falling in love with myself, mm -hmm. with the, the goal of living in happiness and joy and lightness, then that's the mood that my future will hold. Yeah, and I love it because your body, our bodies, carry the emotion. Yes. You know, like if someone says something mean to you, you, you physically feel it. Yes. yes. So I love the idea that the dance helps, you know, release and empower. That's exactly it. I yes. love that. It's and it doesn't mean not acknowledging, mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that there aren't, there isn't work to be done. Right. Visiting those moments and finding forgiveness. And it doesn't mean that there's not hard times mm -hmm. in going through these changes, but what it means is the overall mood, mm -hmm. right? The overall goal is to keep the focus on yourself and bring yourself up. I love that. So that's sort of from the perspective of an adult. Yes. Of having some sure. history, some distance from the things that are happening. But what about girls? I have three girls. Mm -hmm. And I, one of the things that you said in your talk that really resonated with me was being empowered in a, to be able to say no. Yes. And it's something I'm always trying to teach my girls to have their own voice. If they get nervous, they might, they might want me to order something for them. Mm -hmm. And I'm always saying, you order. Use your voice. Yes. So talk a little bit about yes. how this helps girls now. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's where the physical part seems to be easiest for them to find this. Mm -hmm. Um, because we live in our heads so much, and especially at that age. I, I could totally remember being at those ages of feeling, you know, again, no confidence and just embarrassment. To me, growing up, embarrassment was the worst possible emotion I could feel. Mm. I could handle rage, I could handle sadness, I could handle, but embarrassment to me was the worst. I hated that feeling, mm -hmm. right? And so I would avoid it at all costs, which is why I wouldn't call the make an order or whatever it was, <laughs> right? So, um, so when you're in your head and you're in that emotion and it's that spiral and it's going, sometimes learning the different tips on how to shift your body mm -hmm. can help take care of that. So what's one body tip that, because like, a lot of people who are gonna see this have kids. Sure. So what's in boys too, right? It's absolutely, not just for girls. Absolutely, absolutely. Because I also feel, you know, in this culture, you know, it's, I also feel that it is the boys and the men with the low self-esteem themselves mm -hmm. are the ones that feel they have to prove something. Mm. They feel that because our culture, yes, it says that women, you know, women are you know, weaker than men can mm -hmm. or things like that, but then what that does is it puts the pressure on the man to be the strong one. Mm. And then when he doesn't feel like that, he's looking for an outward mm -hmm. proof Right. No, I am. I am the strong one. Mm -hmm. Look, I could do this. Yes. So it's absolute. I am all about just empowering all of us. I feel if we all can feel comfortable enough mm -hmm. to be our authentic selves, mm -hmm. everything would be different. And also little boys too. Like absolutely, they're they're vulnerable as well. So absolutely. So what are some some simple things that yes. kid parents can teach their kids about? having a strong empowered body and being able to say no when it's appropriate right well do you mind if we do a little exercise just no, let's do it let's right. do it let's <laughs> so do it we can do a sitting okay um so if we take our posture up and we breathe into fully into our belly 
and we bring our chin up just a little bit above where you normally would. Pretend you're taking a selfie. So just oh, that won't bit. be hard, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> just a little bit above where it would be, okay. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if we bring our shoulders up and even our arms up and bring all of our focus all the way up mm -hmm. and breathe in the air from up there and even give yourself a smile, that, which happened naturally for you, yeah, notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from here, just talk about your day. Like, oh, I'm having a wonderful day. Yes, Martin's on my show. It couldn't oh, be better. Yes. <laughs> and then let's bring it down. And we're going to roll our shoulders forward mm -hmm. and bring our chin down. And now talk about your wonderful day. Hmm. Not as wonderful, is it, down here? <laughs> Had a great day. Sun is shining. Good weather in Boston. Nice interviews I'm having, had good coffee this morning. Are you convincing yourself of these things to say right now? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So come on. I can't do it. I'll shake it off. So notice how for some people when I do this in my workshops, they physically can't. I'll, have, I'll give them a phrase. I'll say, yeah. I am awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am beautiful. I, whatever it is, they physically can't let the words, come, their bodies won't let them. That was really powerful because I felt like I, I could say it, but I didn't, I wasn't excited. You weren't about feeling it. it. No. <laughs> right. No. Right. And so just that, and as we practice the extended versions of these postures, yeah. we can learn subtle ways to implement them in our everyday lives mm. so that we're not asking our kids to walk around in school like this before a test so that they could feel great. Mm -hmm. It can be as subtle as the shoulders yeah. or the chin or where you're breathing. Yeah. It's so amazing because it's, you think it's kind of silly. Right. But your body knows things that your intellectual brain doesn't. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. So what do you think that most women struggle with in their adult life to stay empowered? Yeah. Um, I wonder if I, I have a feeling that Statistically, so many of us have, and well, statistically, I think all of us have encountered some type of sexual discrimination in some way. Mm -hmm. Even just being a victim of misogyny in a conversation or being hit on, hit on in a really inappropriate way, mm -hmm. I think we all have felt what that's like. Mm -hmm. And so it's that, that feeling that that's how cult the culture looks at us makes it hard for us to break out of it and stay out of it because there's so many reminders. I was just going to say that I was in the elevator like two days ago and I was riding down, I was in a hotel and I was riding down and it was a mix of men and women. And it was, you know, just light talk. Mm -hmm. And one of the women got out of the elevator and somebody else said something, something sort of, sort of not quite appropriate. And it wasn't directed at me, it was directed at her, but I still was like, like, exactly. And you could take a shower after that. Like, yes. You know. Yes. So I think that's what it is. Like we fight so hard and then we're reminded. And for some of us, depending on what your history is and what it is that triggers you mm. can, can trigger you depending on what it is a little deeper than others. So when you're triggered, mm -hmm. not like I'm growing myself and I'm practice, I'm having a practice of this, but when you're triggered, what is the best thing to do? Well, you touched on it where the most important part is to make a regular practice mm -hmm. of these things. Mm -hmm. Because when you make it a regular practice, then it'll be easier to tap into when you need it. Mm. So if you wait for the moment that you need it and your body isn't used to going there, mm -hmm. it's n it, that's the last time it's going to go there. Yeah. So it really is about practice. So for me, when I'm uh, trying to practice a new personality or a new mood or I play around with these things, yeah. I actually set a, a reminder on my phone for three times a day. Oh, wow. For random times throughout the day, like not 10 o'clock, it'll be like 10, 27, yeah. or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And when it goes off, no matter where I am, what I'm doing, I'll take a breath and I'll embody whatever the mood is that I'm working on currently. Mm. And so after doing that, it's amazing how quickly it works too. Mm. So the first time that I bring on a new mood, it may take me a full minute to practice. So I'll do it first thing in the morning mm -hmm. or whatever it is but I'll do it over and over again so that, and I'll think about it when I'm doing it, you know, when might I use this? What is the trigger that this would, mm. that I would need this, that this would come in handy for? Yeah. 
and keep doing that so that when the trigger happens, you have that anchor yeah. of that memory of, oh, this type of trigger, I can do this yeah. to combat it. I like that. It's very intentional. Yes. Very yes. intentional. But it is about the practice. It's about the practice building up. Yeah, I love that. So that you can use it. I love that. And that kind of circles back to what you were saying before is with that little voice, you took it to the next level, little voice, and it's a practice and building that muscle. Exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yes. So what is that little voice telling you now? What is ah! the, what's the next level for you? So the next level for me is, is that breakout, is that finding that way to reach as many women and girls as possible with this message, because I do feel it's a calling. Yeah. I've been sitting on it for, what, seven years now since I graduated my coach training, mm. and I had other little voices tell me other things. Yes, those little voices. And so now I feel like this really, really, really is the time. Yeah. Um, not in a political way, but just to say these past couple years, a lot of things have bubbled to the surface. Yeah. A, a lot of triggering comments and a lot of showing how parts of society are in a place that for some of us, we denied they still were. Mm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so now that all that is bubbling to the surface, that was my sign that I can't, I'm not, I can't anymore. Yeah. I'm not allowed to not share this message anymore. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I love uh, in divine timing. Yes. Divine timing. Yes. I just posted something the other day. I said, don't rush the masterpiece. Yes. Right? You, yes. It, it, there's timing for everything. And if you are listening or at least trying to listen to that voice, I believe, you know, things will unfold as they should. Yes. And, and I do. And I feel like now is definitely the time. I think if I tried to do it back then seven years ago, I wouldn't be nearly as prepared for it yeah. and effective. Yeah. But I'm at a point in my life, in my own personal life, I made such leaps and bounds over these past two years. And, uh, and so everything's just kind of all Moving in place and now. Yeah, it's all in place and <laughs> ready to go, go right? So, awesome. so now's the time. So that's my next level is is pushing it out to as many people right. as I and can. Right, and this is part of that, right? That is part of this it. This is the book, and yes. how can people get this? So this is on Amazon currently, okay. and it will be out in paperback in about two months, but for now it is on Amazon. Cool, Yeah. and if people wanna work with you, if, if there's dance studios watching this, or Absolutely. You know, people who can use the coaching, how can they get in touch with you? Yep, so you can just go to nancymartincoaching.com, and there is where you can connect with me to either work with your dance studios, or to speak at your events, or um, even just one-on-one. -on -one to get to your jam on. This. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go dance and with let's Nancy. dance, yes. <laughs> awesome, well I wanna thank you so much for being here. I wanna thank you for sharing your story because I heard you speak recently at Harvard and it was really moving to me and it connected to, with me as an artist, as someone who's also using artistry and creativity to bring real change into the world. Yes. And I really resonated with that and appreciate that you shared mm. your story and appreciate you being here. Thank you. And, Ooh, I don't want to get choked up, but the girls, helping all the girls. Yes. So thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate it, and I love what you're doing. Awesome. One last question. What does it mean to you to thrive? Oh, for me it is. It's, uh, for me, I thrive when I dance. I absolutely do. I put on a great piece of music, and when I am dancing, that's when I feel like I could conquer the world. Awesome. And so that's what it feels like to me is not feeling held back by anything else just trusting yourself and going out there. Awesome, and you are conquering the world with your message. So. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you, as always, for joining us. And until next time, here's to hitting all your high notes, everybody. Take care, bye-bye. Hi everyone, it's Heather again. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Thrive. Every week we try to bring you people and information to help you change your life for the better, to grow your business, to expand your thinking, and to open your heart. If you did enjoy this content, I would so appreciate it if you would go to iTunes and review us. Let us know how we're doing. We'd love to hear your thoughts and your feedback. And if you found this information helpful or useful in any way, please share it on out. Let your friends and family know 
know about Thrive. And finally, if you'd like to know more about me, you can visit me at heatherpaduska.com. Until next time, here's to hitting all your high notes.